Ah, who's ready to laugh? All of you? Yes. Well, you can come to the right place because, yeah, we have comedy here on Open Mic Night, too. This gentleman has been performing with us, uh, at least in, in our Open Mic, uh, for almost three months now. Pretty consistently, he comes up and each week uh, improves and gets better and better, and he shows all the signs of somebody who's going to be a very promising comic because he has that desire to do it. It's hard to get up in front of people, folks. Actually, that's the number one fear on the planet is uh, public speaking, getting up and having to do something like that. So to get up here, especially at a bar where you don't have a whole bunch of crowd right in front of you, people are drinking as you go to the stuff, playing pool, you got to get up here and try to be funny. It's uh, yeah, let's just say from that. Really drive a guy crazy. <laughs> but not so crazy, right, Brad? That's right. That's right. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'd like to bring up Brad Hutchings, and he's going to give you something to laugh about. That's right. Good to see you, As it turns out, my buddy comedy career, I have been asked sometime this month, I think two weeks from now, to perform at a birthday party uh, for a rather old man and his friends. Uh, friends, family connection, uh, he's turning 80 years old. And they said, well, what do he and his friends like to do? And uh, a friend told me, they like to get stoned. So, I'm working on a couple of jokes, you know, that I can I can work on there, you know, when I I uh, perform for a bunch of 80-year-old stoners. So I'm gonna let me try this one out on you. Have you ever been so high that you clap to unlock your golf cart? <laughs> Have you ever been so high that you tried to put both legs through one leg hole of a depend undergarment? No, oh, all right. I don't know how that keeps going to go. Undergarment. Yeah. Whoop. Brad uh, lost his notes. Wow. <laughs> so, um, I went out shopping the other day for, uh, for dog food with a friend. We went to Petco. And she likes to buy all the canned dog food, the expensive canned dog food for her friends. My, my dog's happy with kibbles, you know, real expensive dog. But her dog has to have the canned stuff and goes through lots of the cans. And she was there because she was looking for uh, looking for a sample of some new brand that's out. It's supposed to be really, really good. And um, it's $50 for a case of 12 cans on Amazon. She told her to buy a couple of cans to see how it went. Well, we didn't find those cans. But we did find, I don't know if any of you dog food aficionados out there know about the Merrick brand with all their great flavors. They're usually about $3 a can. But at Petco the other night, they were 75 cents. So, uh, you just say we, we cleaned the shelves out of that place. And then, um, and then she went back yesterday to two other pet coats and cleaned them out of the 75 cent cans of Merrick dog food. And I, I asked her, well, why, did you ask them why they were so discounted? You know, is it bad food? Is it, you know, dented, dented cans? What was it? And then the manager told her it's because um, those flavors are now out of season. You know, of course, I think your, your dog doesn't care, right? I mean, your dog does not care if it's eating Valentine's venison in July. Your dog does not care if it's eating Easter Bunny stew in August. And your dog certainly doesn't care if it's eating Memorial Day meat and mash in September. But, uh, you know, apparently, apparently dog food does go out of season. Guys, um... I got an email this week from my electric company, Southern California Edison, and uh, they were, wanted to tell me that I'm using 30% more energy, more electricity, than my most efficient neighbors. They're so full of shit. They are or I am? No, they are. Oh, right. Okay, they are. You're right. You're right. We get the same thing. We yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty annoying, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I got to thinking, I got to thinking, okay, so what other businesses what other businesses don't want to sell you more? I mean, like my grocery store. They have never sent me an email saying that I consume 200 pounds more steak on an annual basis than the average vegan, right? Uh, well, you guys know my whole phone situation. Motorola never sent me, never sent me an email saying, you go through four phones in a month when our average customer only goes through one phone every two years. 
So, you know, I'm a little, I, I just find that a little weird, but, you know, that's, that's the electric company for you. Oh, the last thing I want to talk about tonight. What were y'all doing Thursday night at about 11.30 p.m.? I bet some of you were sleeping, and then you weren't because you got an Amber Alert on your phone, right? Okay, is this the most annoying thing ever? You know what? All right. Guys, um, I don't like to get political or philosophical up on the mic. I mean, I try to treat the mic with respect. I try to be funny. This I, this is really close to my heart, and I'm going to make an exception this time. <laughs> Almost 90% of Amber Alerts that get to the Amber Alert stage, they're basically a custody thing that's gone bad. Like some crazy grandmother, some crazy grandmother gets mad because, you know, her daughter's baby daddy is stuck in traffic and 10 minutes late for returning the kid from court-supervised visitation. Like literally, that's what it is. And yet, you know, they, they put up the Amber Alert and they basically involve the whole public in what amounts to a private custody dispute. And I, I just think that's wrong. I think it's, it's gone overboard. In this particular case, you know, they said this 31, this 33-year-old lady carjacked the, uh, carjacked a car at gunpoint, and it had a 16-year-old boy in the back. This is what they said Thursday night. Well, as of yesterday, the police said there was no crime committed. Now, you, you go figure out what happened there, but it's, um, it's, uh, this is a problem. And uh, forget comedy, forget everything else. Amber alerts, these are bad, bad things. So it turns out you could turn amber alerts off on your phone. If you guys have your, your, your uh, Android phones, take them out right now. I'm going to show you how to, how to turn them off. And uh, you go up to your settings, and you go to sound, and then uh, emergency alerts. And under emergency alerts, you can uncheck all these things. See here, I'm doing this right now. Oh, whoa, my phone. What's going on? What's going on? Alert has been issued. The child has been abducted. The suspect is a white male last seen driving a blue 2008 Nissan Rogue. License plate <laughs> 6GPG981. The suspect was last seen in the vicinity of Interstate 5 and Crown Valley Parkway in Laguna Hills. Uh -huh. Well, you look really, uh, good what's going thing, on, Mark? Good thing Laguna Hills is like 10 miles away from here. <laughs> <laughs> did, I, did I type Laguna Hills in there instead of Laguna Hills? Yeah, okay. That's pretty funny. That, my friends, is the first time you've ever seen an app used on stage at an open mic. Probably the last, too. Nah. <laughs> but, Mark, that was my set. What? Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is when you want to be your funny fingers, right? Thank you so much, Brad. It's, it's always, always good to point out how much of a child molester Mark is at an open mic. That's always uh, nice and popular. Hear Amber, that? Amber is the color of your alert. <laughs> yes. How do I follow that one? Hey, we're going to take a five-minute break and call the police. We'll be right back. <laughs> we're going to take a five-minute break, folks, and we'll be right back.